Hi, I'm Craig. I'm an aviculture specialist here at the San Antonio Zoo. And today I'm here to talk to you guys about one of my personal favorite species that we have here. These here are wreathed hornbills. These are actually our chicks from last year. Uh, one of the cool things about these guys is the parents were actually here at our zoo for 16 years before they ever even laid a single egg. And last year we managed to get two eggs out of them and both eggs ended up hatching and growing. Come on, buddy. So we do actually have one male and one female. The male is the one on the left, uh, and his name is Keanu Reeds. And the female is the one that just flew by, and her name is Aretha Frank Franklin. Um, so one cool thing about this species that's kind of unique to them is that um, the females actually come out of the nest looking like males, even though the species is sexually dimorphic. Typically, most species, if they are sexually dimorphic, they come out looking like females and later on transition to the male color. Um, but as you can see, the little girl here actually has that yellow pouch. She has the white feathers up the neck and face and the brown feathers on her crest. Um, the females, however, they, that pouch will be all blue and all their feathers will be black. Uh, and as you can see with her, her pouch is starting to change colors compared to the male up there. And that's because these guys are already about 10 months old and they start getting the female coloration at about a year old. Um, this is actually what the females look like. See the nice blue there and then the all black um, feathers. And then one thing you'll notice about these guys that have not been seen yet is their cask, which is what hornbills are notoriously famous for. And that is the growth on their beak. These guys here, it's still smooth because they haven't started growing that cask yet. They'll actually start growing that cask at about a year old. And you can see that again here in the picture here. And this is actually where the wreathed hornbills get their name from because they they're named after that row of wreaths on their cask. Um, and it used to be believed that you could actually tell the age of a wreathed hornbill based upon counting that number of wreaths, uh, when in actuality, um, they only get 9 to 11 wreaths total, even though their life expectancy is 30 years. Um, the cool thing about the wreath is it actually is used to help reverberate and make their calls louder, so they can be heard in far distances in the rainforest. Um, yeah, do you have any questions so far? Can you go over just again with the, uh, uh, how long it took the parents to lay eggs? Yeah, so the parents, like I said, they were here for 16 years. Um, and it took that long before they ever even laid a single egg. And the first clutch they had, uh, we got our two healthy chicks here out of them. Um, and like this species in the wild, they typically will lay... Uh, a clutch of two, but unfortunately due to lack of resources, only one chick will survive. Here, these guys are so lucky that we provide them with everything they could ever want and need that we were actually able to get two healthy chicks out of them. Um, and like these guys, they're found in Southeast Asia. Uh, they're found from like India all the way over to the Asian islands like Malaysia, Indonesia, places like that. Um, At the zoo, we have two hornbill species, um, I believe. Uh, we have these guys, and we have uh, Vanderdicken, um, which can be found up in Africa Live. Uh, these guys are one of the bigger bodied species of hornbill, while the uh, other species we have is actually a smaller one. Um, one common mistake people make is that they look at these birds and think that they're toucans. Um, but these guys are actually, like I said, hornbills, and the difference between a toucan and a hornbill is, one, their geographic location. Hornbills are only found in Asia and Africa, while toucans are only found in Central and South America. And then another big difference between toucans and hornbills is actually the presence of that cask, as I was mentioning before. Uh, these guys are not endangered. Um, they are listed as vulnerable, and they are actually a protected species in Indonesia and Malaysia. These guys are listed as vulnerable mainly due to um, habitat loss and people hunting them for sport. Um, and currently, our pair, our parents, um, they are actually nesting right now. Um, and that's another real cool thing about these birds is the way they nest. They're actually cavity nesters. So they'll find a big hole in a tree and the female will go in there and she'll mud up the opening to where it's just big enough for the male to bring her food. And uh, it, he'll just feed her every day, all day. And she'll actually be in that nest for about four months. 
She's in there for the whole incubation of the eggs, which is about 34 days. And then she'll be in there for the next three months until the chicks are ready to come out, which is also kind of unique with them because most other species, the female will come out like a month or a couple weeks prior to the chicks. So the female is in self-isolation for four months. And this is actually what the front of the nest looks like after she muds up. As you can see, it's just big enough for her to stick her beak out or for the male to stick his beak in and feed. And yeah, the nest, it, it has to be big enough for three birds this size to fit in there. Uh, once it starts getting a little bit too crowded, that's when the female knows that these chicks are ready to come out and spread their wings. Anything special? So yeah, um, the the biggest special thing about it is just the fact that this is the first time for this species here at the zoo. And we're actually only the second zoo to breed this species in about 20 years. So it was like a real big moment for us. And we actually caught the footage um, on camera and we had actually made a video and posted it um, last year. They fledged out of their nest in August of last year. Um, the female last year went to the nest at the end of April, started mudding up. A couple weeks later, she would have laid her egg. And then it was the first week of June, I actually heard one of the chicks calling. Um, and we managed to get a camera in there and see both chicks. Uh, so we were super ecstatic, super happy. Um, yeah, and then the female was in there, like I said, for four months. And then finally, it just the day came. She knocked down all that mud. Uh, first, it was the boy who came out, followed by mom. And then about a week later, uh, his sister came out of the nest. So fledging is whenever a chick is ready to leave the nest. Um, so like with this species, like I said, it takes three months until they're ready to fledge. If you look at another species of bird, especially like a smaller species, they'll fledge like within two weeks. Uh, so it all depends on the species, the size of the bird, what kind of nutrients and things they need to actually grow big and strong to be able to leave the nest and start flying. Their diets. So these guys, like most other hornbills, are omnivores. Um, so they primarily eat fruit. Um, in the wild, their favorite food item is actually figs. Much so, we give them a bunch of other stuff. One of their favorite things here is actually avocado. Uh, so we always are providing them with plenty of avocado and plenty of banana, different fruits and vegetables. They also will eat meat, like little mice and stuff like that. They eat bugs. They'll just eat a little bit of everything. The largest hornbill species, I believe, is the rhinoceros hornbill or the greater hornbill? Uh, those guys, I think they're, they're about the same size as these guys. They're slightly bigger. Uh, they're about a little more than three kilograms. These are actually pretty big. Yeah, these guys here, they actually weigh between 1.3 and 3 kilograms. Um, like the little girl we have, um, she actually weighs about 1.3 kilograms. Uh, our juvenile male, he weighs about two kilograms. Uh, the mother weighs about 1.5 kilograms and the father weighs about three kilograms. Mm -hmm. and why are they separated from their parents? So these guys are separated from their parents because uh, the male told them it's time to go. Uh, the father said, it's, you guys are old enough, it's time for you to go live on your own. Um, and he kicked them out of the exhibit around, or the habitat around um, six months in age uh, so it was like two three months after they actually came out of the nest he said it's time for you guys to go live on your own and learn how to be adult birds yeah and then right there you can actually see the male um, swinging on his swing and you can really see that cask of his that the uh, juveniles are missing so far they start growing the cask at uh, the age of one, um, and then they'll grow one wreath every year for, like I said, to about nine to 11 wreaths. Um, and then after that, they don't really grow anymore. Um, and as I said previously, it used to be thought that you could tell the age of these guys just by counting that row of wreaths, um, but they can live up to 30. So that's not quite accurate. So their lifespan is 30 years? Yeah, their life expectancy is about 30 years. So pretty long lived. In the, wild. in the wild? In the wild, it's actually not quite known what their life expectancy is, but it's still uh, believed that it's about 30 years. Uh, and these guys, they'll find their nest cavity, and then they'll actually go to that same nest cavity year after year 
until it gets torn down from deforestation. Um, what kind of enrichment do you give them? So these guys, uh, the parents, they don't really care too much about enrichment. They care more about their food and spending time together and taking care of their babies because that takes over half a year to do. Uh, these guys, however, their favorite thing is just like plant material. They love going down and tearing up their plants. I'll give them flowers from their parents' enclosure and they'll tear those up. Uh, sometimes I'll give them boxes with like crickets and stuff in it and they'll chase after all the crickets. Uh, it just depends on their mood. Sometimes even the male, like his favorite thing is whenever a leaf manages to fall in the exhibit, he'll grab it, he'll throw it around and like just fly around chasing it. So. Just, I guess, the, well, describe their personalities, each one of them. All four of them? Well, or just these two? All right, so these guys, um, they're still pretty timid with people. Um, so this is kind of what they do when people are around. They just kind of try to keep their distance, but just keep an eye on you. Um, they've been starting to get a little bit braver now that they're getting older and they're getting more used to me. Um, the male there, he is, he's just like a goofball. He likes to get down on the ground and just tear up the plants. And like I said, he'll throw around leaves and just chase them around. And the female actually likes to dig around in the dirt and stuff. And then, um, her brother does actually like to pick on her, like older brothers do. He uh, will chase her around, and he'll peck at her and bite at her and stuff. But they get along just fine. Uh, what about parents? The parents, uh, so they are great animals. They're great birds. They actually uh, really like people. So anytime you step into the exhibit, the male actually comes flying right over to you. He wants you to hand him grapes and other food items. Uh, and then they'll follow you around. Like I said, they're great parents whenever they have the chicks. Um, the female is a little bit more timid than the male, but she still comes over for her grapes and everything. And yeah, they're just great birds. And what are their names? Their names are Haku and Chihiro. And then what are these names again? Their names, the boy, his name is Keanu Reeves, and then the female is Aretha Franklin. Uh, somebody's asking what plants are in, so do you mock the plants inside? Uh, like what kind of plants do I plant in here? So in their exhibit currently, there's just a couple boxwood because they've torn up like the grasses and stuff I've planted in here. And with the parents, I have liriope, hibiscus, rosemary, and these guys really like the rosemary and stuff, the different herbs and the flowers. So they're really big on tearing it up. Uh, and then other habitats, we have different plants based upon what the bird's needs are, what kind of habitat they prefer. And like these guys, one of their favorite thing is actually getting a bath. And um, just whenever it's raining or whenever I'm cleaning their exhibit, I'll just give them a bath and they'll, they'll throw their wings out and they'll preen themselves and they'll just dance around in the rain. And that's uh, because these guys, their natural habitats like high rainforests, like up in the mountains and things like that. Okay, where are they originally from? These guys are from Southeast Asia. Um, they can be found in like Indonesia, Malaysia, all the way from India up to uh, Bhutan, uh, just they have a big wide range of natural habitat. Uh, yeah, um, the last thing I have is to help us care for these birds, especially since we have uh, hopefully some more chicks on their way. We could use any donations possible to help pay for their food bill, to help provide them with all the resources they need so we can continue to get clutches of two healthy chicks and to help support all the other birds and animals that we have here at the zoo who need the help with uh, their diets and everything. Yeah, so in their beaks, they do actually have uh, nerve endings. Um, so they can actually feel everything in their beaks. And you'll see a lot of birds, they do like to actually just like rub their beaks on the perching, which is why if you look at the perch he's on, it's missing the majority of the bark because they're always there just like rubbing it and stuff. And that's another cool thing about the hornbills is that the inside of their beaks are actually hollow, especially inside of their cask. Their cask is actually full of uh, like spongy hollow material. And like I said, that's to help with the sound and make it uh, reverberate and go a further distance. All right, all right, well, thank you for joining me today, as well as Keanu Rees and Aretha Franklin. As I said, please, help us and donate some money so we can help take care of these guys and raise their siblings. All right. Thank you. Have a good day.